Hey, welcome to Mom's Fit Life, and this is the December newsletter workout. Grab yourself a wall, a band, and a low step or a stack of books. We are going to start against the wall. You're going to lie down so that your knees and hips are at 90 degrees. So you should see the top of my head, my knees, and my thighs. If my thighs were blocked, I would not be at 90 degrees in my hips. Your top foot should be about one inch in front and about one inch above the bottom foot. Reach with your top arm, and then as you exhale, I want you to think about dragging that foot back like you're pulling it through super glue, engaging the back of that leg. Big, full, audible exhale, lifting the pelvic floor, tightening the core, inhaling into your back and your sides, relaxing the pelvic floor, but keep pulling back on that foot. You need to maintain tension in the hamstring in the back of your leg the whole time. You're doing about five or six breaths like that. Okay, then flipping over to the other side, again, make sure knees and hips are at 90. Top foot one inch in front and one inch above. Open the knees, reach that top arm. Big, full inhale into your sides and your back. Slide that foot back like you are trying to drag it across the wall, but it is stuck in super glue. Big, audible exhale, lifting from the pelvic floor, tightening the core. You should feel this about the bottom of your back pocket on both sides. Abs should be engaged enough that they are not resting on the floor on the bottom. Again, about five or six breaths, full audible exhales, full inhales. Now, grabbing your band, you can anchor this to a door, a bedpost, <clears throat> a weight rack, excuse me. And then I like to wrap the handle around my arm so it's not flapping around. Create enough tension that you feel like it's pulling you slightly over. And then you're going to bridge off the foot closest to the anchor. So in this case, the band is anchored to my right. I'm bridging off my right foot, pushing equally through my foot, lifting straight up towards the ceiling. Abs are engaged, squeezing that right glute. Feeling that inner thigh work just a little bit extra as you lift up. <clears throat> so having the anchor on the side of the down leg, you're going to work that inner thigh. You can also switch at some point and put the down leg away from the anchor and you will feel the outside of that booty a little extra. So again, nice full exhales, lift the pelvic floor, tighten the core, press through that foot. Make sure your weight is evenly distributed and you're not letting the knee fall out. So think about hugging that knee in towards your midline as you lift up. And I'm talking about the knee that you're bridging off of. Okay, that top foot should be bent with your foot flex so you're not using the momentum to help lift into that bridge. Now you're going to grab your small step or even a short stack of books. I like having a rectangular step because you can kind of use it as a visual. But basically you are trying to reach the free leg back and across your body as far as you can, making sure you're pressing into the arch of your foot. Keeping that knee in line with your midline and do not let your shoulders and hips rotate open with the movement. You want to keep them square to the wall in front of you. So again, you're kind of sitting back into that leg on the step, lengthening the glute or your butt muscle, and then extending and reaching across with that opposite leg. Exhale, stand and drive through that front foot. So switching sides now, again, I like that in this case, my step is a little more rectangular so that I can try and visually just reach for the opposite side. But if you're on a small stack of books and it's only the size of your foot, you're just trying to reach as far across as you can without letting the shoulder and hip open up. Okay, again, making sure that inside of that foot is pressed down nice and firm. That butt is lengthening, and you're kind of feeling this between your front and back pockets. 
really more like between your back pocket and your side seam on a jean. So a little bit off to the side from that back pocket. Now we're gonna go into some alternating, I'm sorry, some single-sided hinge lunges. So you're gonna get yourself into a lunge position and then hinge forward. You are gonna lift up and down from that position without letting yourself come out of that hinge at the top. So keep your chest over your heel the whole time. Drive through that front foot, front heel, exhale as you stand, tightening the core, lifting that pelvic floor. And then switching sides. So again, come into your lunge first and then hinge forward at the hips. Okay, nice hinge. And now keep that hinge as you press up and down. What this is gonna do is open up the glute a little bit extra on that front leg, allowing you to get into the back of that leg and the glute a little more and not just make it a quad dominant exercise. Again, try not to let your chest lift at all. You should maintain that hinge position. And then we're gonna end with 12 squats. For any of these, but especially the squats, feel free to grab a weight and hold it goblet style, which is where I have my hands right now, or hold two weights at each side. You can do the same thing with any of the exercises. So feel free to grab a weight to make them a little harder. But with the squat, toes are forward, feet are hip or shoulder width apart, sit back into those hips, chest stays tall. If you have any questions, of course, let me know.